Alrighty. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, everybody. What's going on? Hey, still got your jacket on. Cool. <laughs> it's a little bit cold in here tonight. I could have started a fire for us. Fuck. Ah, yes. Future episodes. Yep. Around the fire. That'll be fun. Oh, yeah. Yule tiding around the, uh, the fire. Yeah, this is, uh, that'll be a good show. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, what are we on? Episode 19. 19. Was, uh, um, we're going to do the usual shares. I'm Jay, Gravity. And I'm Scott, Ultimate. And, uh, what do we got going on today? I got, I got my, my junk drawer today. I can't wait. <laughs> this is, uh, this is much larger than Jay's junk drawer and it has way more stuff in it. Mm -hmm. But we're going to try to whip through this fast and make it as not boring as possible. Well, the if thing... Jay sees something that he thinks is interesting, he'll just point it out and I'll, I'll have to explain things. <laughs> Uh, the thing about my drunk, junk drawer was, is that I have multiple junk drawers in, inside the house. But I just brought one of them, which is pretty cool. Uh, but uh, do you have more than one, or is this just your main one? Or? No, this is this is the one. This is the one. Okay. This is the, what, the big boy right here. I got everything in it. All right, so that's shared. Everybody's nothing, sharing to the too uh, personal. See people jumping on right away. Mm -hmm. So. Share, 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 and we'll get started on the uh, episode. We got lots of stuff tonight. We got some uh, some paranormal talk again, some some Halloween stuff. Uh, yeah. We got the junk drawer that'll probably take up a lot of our time. Probably, because you know we uh, we just keep coming at you with everything that we got, and there's always so much more. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we never run out of material. <laughs> hey, before we get started. How about them Jays? Yes. Did you watch the uh, the final game? I did. Beautiful. Blue Jays, uh, uh -huh. they just keep winning. A sweep of Texas? It's amazing. It was awesome. I, uh, I was at work. I was on the security podium at work, and uh, I couldn't see a TV. I had people, like, as they would go by, they would tell me the score and stuff. And then we had our shift change right, uh, you know, right around 11 o'clock we, we shift change. And when we did the shift change, um, I got off the podium, and there's a TV right beside it that I can't see, so I come around the corner, just as that pitch came in, and that's when they won the game. Yeah. Right when I started watching it. It was, it was just amazing. Oh, man. It was, they just keep winning. That's, that's what I said. You know, they all, all they had to do was get into the playoffs, and they got a good enough. They have a good enough team to win the whole thing, right? Oh, they do. I'm like, they just got to get in. That's all they got to do, and they did. They just keep winning. Uh, That's great. Frank says he's calling me out on my own show. I told him I was going to call him out. You're being called out, Frank. Frank, he called out. He said something funny today. He's like, he's like, uh, I'm going to start my own show. It's going to be called uh, Monday Night Osha Raw. Nice. Monday Night Osha Raw. Nice. <laughs> nice. I, don't know, I wonder what he's going to talk about on that show. Um, probably junk food. Junk food? Yeah, yeah. Not pro wrestling? No, God, no. No, no. Yeah? No? Frank doesn't like wrestling. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Gotta talk about something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see you make your own show, Asha Ra. Mm-hmm. That's what, so that's probably why he came on, just to see if I'd call him out. You've been called out. You've been called out, Frank. Come at me, bro. Uh, not getting updates of comments here. Sorry, bear with me here. I almost need like a, a second phone so that I could follow along with comments while the other phone... You have a, you have a computer. I do have a computer, but it doesn't quite uh, give me updates all the time, which it doesn't seem to be doing right That's now. Odd. Emily loves this show. Frank says you can come put me through a table. That'd be cool. I would let you do that for the sake of the show. Let's see you come here and put me through a table. We'd have to move Scott's junk drawer first. I don't want to spill it everywhere. No. No, because then that just wouldn't be cool. It'd be a mess to clean up. <laughs> Asha Ra doesn't sound as good as our show. No, of course not. 
course not. B, uh, speak your pro wrestling quickly. Two seconds. Two seconds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Goldberg's coming back. Okay. Right Goldberg. On. Nice. That's all I wanted to say about that is uh, Goldberg's been gone for like 15 years. Yep. And Brock Lesnar is challenging him to a fight. And Goldberg is coming to answer that call. A real fight? I hope so. God, I hope so. <clears throat> that would be amazing. To be like, screw the wrestling. We're just going to fight. Amazing. I'm, I hope that happens at Survivor Series in Toronto when I'm there. I want to see that happen. Do they have the same finishing move as like the football tackle? Uh, Goldberg is a football tackle. And uh, Brock Lesnar uses a uh, suplex. Oh, I see. And uh, his finishing move, he calls it uh, F5, where he like he picks the guy up on his shoulders and spins oh, him around. Spins him, yeah. spins him around, slams him into the mat. And uh, Goldberg's is uh, essentially a pile driver. Like he he brings the guy straight up, right? And then he spins and slams the guy down when he lands on him. Right. Uh, they call it the jackhammer. Yeah. Right. That's a uh, uh, similar to. Uh, that's similar to a, um, a throw that was in judo. They outlawed it though. It, where you pick a guy and you hold him straight up and then you bring him down. Well, in judo they call they call it uh, they call it something different. It's not a Japanese. Uh, I don't know what the Japanese name for it is, but they call it a cavalry, and where uh -huh. you uh, throw you're gonna throw the guy and then midway through the throw you turn it into him. So he's up and he's sideways, but then you turn in and you catch him, mm -hmm. and then you go straight down with him. Beautiful. It's thick. There, there's a series of them. They're called a, they're called sidewalk slams or sidewalk throws. Where yep, yeah, it's impossible to do a break fall. You're like you're making the forcing the guy to land flat on his back, which is really painful. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, it sucks. Well, and, and the idea behind putting both side down is mm -hmm. you're rushing all the blood to their head. So that when you slam okay. them down, it hurts a little more because there's <laughs> less blood in the rest of their extremities and it causes like a pins and needle effect. Uh, I see. Okay. And uh, you, you know when, like, when you have pins and needles and you smack it, it really hurts? Yeah. That's the idea behind it. Right on. Is that how he explains it? Uh, well, that's how it has been explained for elevated moves of upside down wrestling. Okay. They put people upside down to rush the blood to their head and uh, out of their extremities. i never heard that before. Yeah. It's very uh, interesting. Well, my signature move would be the bow rat. <laughs> buddy, uh, buddy has a signature where he we go to these car shows, and uh, he like uh, over in a weekend party or whatever, and yeah, he'll just all of a sudden be wearing just the bow rat bathing suit. <coughs> you know, uh, is, uh, just covers his junk and then goes up over his shoulders and turns into a thong at the oh, back. Oh, bow rat! Yeah, <laughs> I thought you were saying boat wrap. No, well, it, it wraps <clears throat> his boat up. For sure, but uh, it's called the bow rat. That's what he does. He the bow rat now is that what you're saying? It? Yeah, the bow rat. The bow rat. Like the movie bow rat. It's borat. Bor bow bor. Tomato tomato. It's borat. He says his name like 80 times in the movie. <laughs> All right, you're 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 stuck on a semantic here. It's not semantics. Yeah. The bow rat. I'm just gonna mispronounce everything then. <clears throat> Jay Mac Gray. Yeah, perfect. <clears throat> Jay Mac Gray. Oh, Jay McCray. Yeah, over here. That's me. So what's uh, what's going on with this uh, junk drawer? Uh, I mean, I well, can see in right now, but if, you guys can't. And I'm there's a lot of curiosities coming. Well, I'll tell you what, McCray. If you want to go through it, yep. You can just start randomly right here. Here, take a hand. <laughs> just take a couple. Of, we gotta go through this quick. <laughs> There's way too much stuff in here. Dog treats. There's way too much stuff in here. Well, this is easily explainable because you have a dog. I do have a dog. His name's Tootsie. Tootsie's part Bichon, part Poodle. He's a great dog. And Loves his treats. <laughs> and uh, he's a fabulous dog. I'll give him treats all day long. It's awesome. Will he's you, so good. Will, will you eat one of these? Mm, uh, no, it probably tastes gross. It probably does. I, I won't eat one. Plus, I'm not a trained monkey. I don't do stuff like that on command. No, that's true. Does anybody want to cover and eat a dog treat? Yeah. That'd be, that'd be, that's a I'm challenging you. Cover and eat a dog treat. 
Here, I'll give you some pedestrian stuff there. <laughs> pedestrian stuff. Scissors. Don't run with these. There's a uh, screwdriver. It's a Red Robertson right there. I'll also, don't run with this. Uh, my travel Kleenex. In case you travel to the junk drawer. Highlighter. There's a stapler. <laughs> you never know when you're going to need that. That's very true. Nail clippers, of course. Yeah, that's pretty... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah. Is this Melba Toast? That's Grissol. <laughs> yeah, man. Grissol Melba Toast. Grissol Melba Toast. If you're in a snacking need and you're in a pinch, you have Melba Toast in your drawer. That is, uh, <laughs> that's really healthy. It's good for you. Yeah. <laughs> I love Melba Toast. It's good. And, uh, yeah, sometimes there's, uh, you know, you just want a quick uh, little snack late at night, and that's what you got. That's why I also have these. These are my favorite, sesame snaps. Oh, uh, sesame snaps are really good. Those are my favorite. I bought a whole box from Costco. <laughs> There's 36 packs in one box. Beautiful, and they're like, oh, there's so many, they're good. Man, you have so else. much stuff in I here. Know, there's a ton. Yep, we got strong arm. Right. And uh, steel jaw. Transformers. <laughs> Transformers are good to hide in your oh, junk I just drawer. found something I was looking for. Oh, that's cool. What is that? That's a digital scale. Digital scale for all the things you need to weigh. Yeah. In small scale. I was actually just looking for that. Do you... Is this for your drugs? <laughs> no. It's not, I don't do drugs. <laughs> well, there you go. Kids, I don't do drugs. Stay in school. Don't do drugs. <clears throat> that's for... This is what I measure with it. Right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's packed with jewelry. Put it on the scale. Or a bucket of jewelry here. Yeah, bucket of jewelry. This is a cool <laughs> little book. <laughs> this is Scott's book of secrets. Yeah. And oh, it's not handwritten. It's uh, it's somebody else's secrets. It's uh, world secrets. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Book of secrets. I won't do well on that. Uh, that's a Coors Light uh, Bluetooth speaker. Oh, nice speaker. Yeah. What else uh, we got here? That's the, the uh, cell phone wallet thing still in the package. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> uh, there's some fishing line right here. Uh, I, I love fishing. We should go. We should do a fishing episode. Yeah. And the fishing line just keeps going. It just, here. Yeah, it's kind of unraveled. Can't really see it, but it's there. I don't know. You want more sesame snaps? What, what else, else we got? Man, there's so much stuff in here. There's, what is this? Sensi. Oh, yeah, I got that for free. They were giving it away at a garage sale. It is a little green Sensi thing. I imagine you probably light it up or something. This is cool. This is a battery pack for, like, cell phones and stuff. Oh, yeah, you charge this up, and then it charges your device. Yeah, some, drug, go. some drug addict gave it to me. Really? Because I gave him a ride somewhere, and, uh... <laughs> he and bartered with this? He needed to pick up and shit like that. And I'm like, well, you know what? I'll drive you there. And then I'm just going to leave. And he's like, whatever, fine. And he, he needed those <laughs> drugs. So he gave that to me. Oh, I got some uh, Allen keys. Yeah. Those handy. You got tools in there, which is good. I do have tools. I got a shit ton of uh, cards. Random empty baggie. Hold on, what's this? Ah, uh, it's the... Key fob to my old car. Key fob to oh, you know what car this is to? Yeah, the Maxima. The, <laughs> that car was bent in half. Yeah, yeah, it was. His car literally like it bent <clears throat> in the middle. It was just like you could see this bow in the car where it bent. It yeah. was hilarious. Yep. You drove that into the ground. Yes, I did. What else? You, there's a lot of hockey cards in here. Yeah, a lot of you Tim Hortons hockey cards. Truly Canadian. Are these recent or previous years? This is last year because this is a Phil Kessel. When he oh, was yeah, on the, the Maple Leafs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a ton of those cards. Uh, what other good stuff? Wait, something here says Sephora. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what's in here. It is a uh, mirror. Yeah. You, did you buy this when you went to Sephora? No, Sephora gives those away whenever you buy a gift card. They put the gift card inside it. Oh, okay. And that's how you, you, you give it to people. And uh, Emily shops is for a lot. Yeah. And gets a lot of gift cards, so uh, there's a ton of those. I got one in my car, and I got one here. 
Mm-hmm. Because you know what? You never know what if there's. You gotta check your uh, your face, your beard, or something. You know. <clears throat> you gotta make sure you're looking all right. I don't even know what this is. What is this? There's a little jar here. Oh God, I have no clue. What is this? Uh, oh, it's um, it's like a eye eyes ointment stuff. You know, oh, like okay. really dry eyes and like uh, allergies and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, it's like a the doctor gave it to me. It was like a trial size or something. Really powerful stuff. I only get powerful stuff. We get a bracelet because I'm huge. It has a bat on it. <clears throat> oh, that's Emily's. Yeah, Emily has stuff oh, in your drunk drawer. Yeah, jeez. She was looking for this. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I found yeah, it for yeah, you, Emily. Yeah, yeah. I found it for you. Found a bracelet. You're you welcome. Need, you need this. You're welcome. I found it for you. Uh, what else you got in there? <laughs> Oh man, okay. Tape. Oh, look at that. Yes. What? Is that a fork? That is my back scratcher. Oh, this is the back scratcher. That's the back you scratcher. You talked about this back scratcher before. Yes. Telescoping, all metal. Probably cost three bucks, and it's awesome. That is a great back scratcher. I, I didn't say it right. Back scratcher. All day long. That's a good one. Yeah, uh, there's tape, more markers, pencils. These are all my gift cards. I put them in a tin. There's a bunch. Lots of hockey cards. Oh, that's more uh, metal, actually. A box of thumbtacks in a slightly old box. <laughs> oh, made, that's my gold bag, Made actually. in England. That's my gold bag. It's my gold bird bag. Are you gold bagging me, son? Uh, there's a lighter with an octopus on it. Oh, it still works. Oh. Yeah, nice. Tape recorder. Oh, you know what? Ghost hunting tape recorder. Hey, I have the same one in the house. Uh, didn't somebody give us those? Yes. I don't have any tapes for mine. Uh, Gary did. I don't have any tapes for mine. I don't know where to get tapes. Uh, I put mine up for sale. Pretty rare. If, uh, if you want to buy a tape recording ghost hunting tool for EVPs, I am selling mine for five whole dollars. Or if you just want to record people and yeah, without them knowing, you'd have to find the tapes like, mm-hmm. online or something. Um, what do we got? It's coupons, pencils. There's a random receipt from Finn McCool's. Yeah. <laughs> Might uh, come in handy. Yeah. Just need it right off Finn McCool's. There's not a <laughs> more, much more interesting stuff. There's a lot of cables, nail clippers, wires, needle and thread. Always need needle and thread. Yeah, I need it's essential. Okay. There's a calculator. I always have a needle and thread. They're in like every drawer and all my overnight bags and everything. I always put them in there. Just completely useful. What else we got in there? So the markers, batteries, this random X-Acto knife. Uh, movie else? night out to Landmark? Is that? This? Oh, yeah, I, need to, I need to use that. Yeah. Manicure scissors? Mm hmm. What's in here? I don't know. Oh, uh, there's, a, there's a chain in here. Really? A silver chain or something. Oh, right on. Yeah, that's cool. Nice. Just put that in the silver bag. <laughs> See what else is in here. Dental yeah. floss? Dental floss, yeah. What is this bottle? Again, key. Callus eliminator. Nice. Yeah. In case you get some calluses. My feet are a giant callus. Uh, okay. okay. Oh, we got a, we got a tiny flashlight. So that doesn't work. So if the power goes out, I'm don't. Still screwed. You're still screwed. <laughs> yeah. And a, a nice pencil sharpener for all the pencils that he has in here. Oh, <laughs> shit's flying out. Uh, you got paper clip type thing, you have paper clip. Uh, yeah, you have a lot of gift cards in here. Oh, I found a thumb drive. Mm, perfect. It couldn't be a junk drawer without a thumb drive in it. Markers. Man, there's there's all kinds of stuff. Oh, was this? P- 
Provodon iodine swab stick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the doctor calls and he's like, yo, I need a swab sample. He's like, perfect, I got one right here. I'll uh, bring it in. It's an iodine, iodine like cleaning thing. Oh, don't put it in your mouth then. <laughs> you get like a cut or something and you want to like clean it? Yeah. There's all kinds of creams and medications and ointments <laughs> in here. And that's my life. Uh, a little uh, charging stand for your iPhone. Some tweezers. Those are expensive tweezers. This drawer is never ending. Uh, well, I'm gonna put his stuff back in here. <laughs> well, wait. Here's a uh, a random skittle or candy <laughs> in the bottom of the drawer. <laughs> you can just throw that out. No, no, oh, you're yeah. keeping it. No, it's all right. <laughs> You know what that is? That's that's one of those um, Maynard peach, oh, uh, those... fuzzy peach bites or whatever. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. fuzzy now. They, yeah, it's true. <laughs> There's a lot of dirt and hair and smegma at the bottom of the <laughs> Smegma. Smegma. There's smegma down there. Uh, you know it'd be in the bottom of his drawer? Smegma be down there. So, yeah. Hey, Emily, if uh, you're looking for this bracelet, it's in there. It's in here. Yeah, there's no system for them. You can't have Going a system for in. your junk drawer. No. Nah. It just has to go in. You know what the... Actually, that's not true. There is one system to a junk drawer. It has to be flattened to the point where you can close the drawer. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's, that's the key. you got to be able to close the drawer so you don't see the junk. And then uh, you only see it when you open it. Nobody wants their junk drawer laying open. <laughs> no. That's Scotty's okay. junk drawer, so. That's my junk drawer. No prop tonight, just the junk drawer. Oh my god, that's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just leave it on the table, man. I'm gonna get it out of the way. It's pissing me off. <laughs> it's gonna distract me, too. I'm gonna be looking yeah. in here. You'll be like, oh, cool, I found yeah. this. Uh, <laughs> heavy as stink, too. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Good old just drunk drawer. Alright. That was fun. Oh, yeah. So if anybody else would like to come on the show and bring your junk drawer, that would be awesome. We will go through your junk drawer. Yeah. That'd be cool. That's you wanna good. go through everybody's junk drawer? Steve. Steve really liked smegma. Smegma. Dirt and smegma. Uh, what up, Moncton Spidey? How old is the box? Yeah. How how old is the junk drawer? I think that's what Paul wanted to know. Oh yeah, it's it's been building for years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's well, it's my only. It's the only place that I put random objects. Yep. I have one drawer, and. Uh, Actually, when you said it's got to be flat enough to close, yep. it never closes. Oh, yours doesn't close? No. Is well, there I don't run with the drawer? No, I just leave it open. Oh, oh okay. You know what else, <laughs> what else I do? Since it's open all the time, because I'm always going in there for something. Yep. I, uh, I also use it as a stand for working on things late at night, like if I'm painting something. So you put something over yeah. top of it? I have like a small board, and I'll put the board over top of the drawer, and then paint something on top of the board. <laughs> like, I'll look up like a tutorial on the internet, and be like, all oh, right, on, yeah. And then I'll swing over and start doing it. So it's a makeshift countertop as Pretty well. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. I put, I, yeah, I put it to use. You know, it gets a lot of use. Buddy says his, <clears throat> his drawer is full of condoms and lube and porn and a Twinkie. Nice. I think I heard that joke in a movie somewhere. Yep. Or maybe two or three. Uh, I, I don't know what movie that is. You know what else is full of condoms, lube, and porn? Twinkies. No. What? Is, uh, it? no, they're the uh, front entrance to every gay club. <laughs> well, you're not wrong there. Yeah. <laughs> not, that I have, not that there's anything wrong with gay people. It's fine. But they always have that giant fishbowl full of condoms and lube. It's like they want them to have sex in the club. 
But then they, mm-hmm. they, no, they, we don't want that to happen here. Uh-huh. We just don't know they, it's gonna happen when you leave. Don't they have strict rules about like nudity and stuff at gay clubs? <laughs> yeah, for sure they, they do. Did. Yeah, they do. Yeah, you can't you can't go out there. It, it's not a swingers club. You, you can't go and start <clears throat> screwing everything. You gotta. It's it's just a club where uh, a certain community stereotype of people go, and they have a good time and they meet people of like other gay people. There's also a lot of straight people that go there. True. Yeah. Mostly straight women. So they don't get hit on. <clears throat> well, straight women love gay men. Yep. That's true. And uh, gay men love the dem titties. Do they? Yeah? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Gay men love dem titties. Huh. And, of course, uh, the women, uh, the straight women, just let them play with them. The guys will come up and play with them and shit. And the girls will be like, oh, he's so funny. He's playing with them titties. And uh, they don't think there's anything wrong with it. But, you know, if I went up behind a girl and just started playing with her titties at a bar, oh, man, I'd get slapped and thrown out of a bar. Hey, what's the deal with that? Yeah. <laughs> just like, uh, just pretend I'm gay. Only I'm not. I wonder if that would work if you just pretended you're gay. I'm like, hey, yo, I'm gay. And just start playing with them titties. I don't guess. Okay. All right. I don't, I don't think that's a good impression of a gay man. <laughs> hey, you, I'm gay. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> but I, I don't think... Hey, wait a minute. Wait, I, don't, I don't know about that. Hey, I'm gay. I'm willing to try. I'm willing to try. Yeah? We'll just, we'll just go to a gay bar and we'll just start playing with titties. Well, uh, that's good. You, Emily you know, says she has a gay friend who is obsessed with hers. See, there you go. There you go. Gay guys obsessed with titties. <clears throat> Say dem titties again. So <laughs> dem titties. So are normal guys. I don't know. Yeah. You, well, you well, know. Well, normal. I shouldn't say normal. I should straight. Straight. Right. <laughs> Buddy says I would be a bear. I'm aware that I would be a bear. I am a big guy and I'm hairy. I'm aware that I would be a bear. Uh, but I would still like dem titties. <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, gay, you know, you know, it's funny because they just, you, whether you're gay or straight, you love titties, you know? Yeah, well, they're, they're um, amazing things. Uh, women, though, choose to be lesbians, and, uh, I, I don't think that it's that they don't like the cock, it's just they don't like men, because they still use dildos. Right. So, I mean, you So know, you think it's mostly that, it's not that the, that lesbians are, are attracted to women, it's just that they hate men so much. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I think uh, the idea, maybe they don't hate a specific guy or anything like that, but uh, the lifestyle and the idea of living with a guy and, and being in a monogamous relationship with a guy or anything like that, um, I, I, they don't they don't want to do that. Or maybe even the act of having sex with a guy, they don't want to do that. But, yeah, uh, but they definitely want a dildo. You know, I saw a funny meme that said, uh, you know, lesbians chose to give up uh, penis, so they shouldn't be allowed to have dildos. They made their choice. Sure. But, you know, uh, uh, th- 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 it's an interesting theory because I met, I met uh, someone who said she was a lesbian, which it was, that was the, uh, the she had to get that out as quickly as possible. <laughs> she needed to tell me that as quickly as possible. And I said, oh, that's great. You know, cool. Why, why don't you have a lesbian on the show and interview them? I would love to have a lesbian on the show. Yeah, hell yeah, man. That'd be awesome. A full-blown lesbianist on the show, vegetarian lesbian. Well, like I was going to say, so this girl had to tell me she was a lesbian as quickly as possible. And I said, okay, that's cool. Uh-huh. And then she's like, yeah, what do you think about that? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I've met, I don't know. I said, I've met lesbians and gay people, and I've met all kinds of people. I said, that's, that's great. <coughs> it's like when, a, veg- you think about it's like when a vegetarian goes, oh, yeah, yeah, that's great, because, you know, I'm a vegetarian. I'm like, okay, great, perfect. Good that's, for you. nice. Good for you. And then they, I don't care. I, that's, that's great, yeah. I, I, I respect that decision. That's great. If I could... Yeah. If I could handle being a vegetarian, I probably would. But I Thank you for it. making your sexual preference known immediately. But anyway, I'm gonna start whole... introducing myself. Hey, hey, my name's Jason, and I am totally straight. Yep. 
But uh, uh-huh. she, um, the, what she, she kept saying, she kept talking trash about men the whole time. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I was being really nice to her, and she said, yeah, because that's what you men do all the time. You do this and that. So like, she's a feminist as well. I was well. like, whoa, okay, uh, and that's, let's calm down, it's, it's all right. Does she have short hair? But um, the thing was, though, afterwards, I mentioned to uh, Emily, I said, you know what? She's not gay. I said, yes, she is. I'm like, no, I don't think so. She just currently hates men. Yep. And you know what? Next thing uh, Emily hear, hears from her, she's dating a guy. Dating a guy. Yep. She so found one she liked. Your theory could be true to a certain extent. Yeah, might. I mean, it's not concrete, but uh, it may be true for some. Maybe. I think it's true to a certain extent. Yeah, I mean, you hate <laughs> men. Does she have short hair? Yes. <laughs> called it. Yes, she did. I'm not going to say anything about that, but called it. All right. You're a, you're a genius. <laughs> I like to think so. We got, sure. uh, we got lots of people over here. Sure. Double digits on the viewers. Sure. Yeah, I think she's a genius. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it reminds me of people... Yeah, I'm smart. Oh, yeah, great, yeah. That's what Jay just did. Yeah. I am yeah, smart. Yeah, yeah, I'm really smart. Or like, uh, my one friend... Is my one friend on here? Mm-hmm. No, okay, good. Anyway, uh, yeah. that's what he says. He goes, uh, you know, there's a study. study that just came out that says people that swear a lot are really smart. I'm like, really? That's oh, like the yeah, opposite yeah. of every study. And he goes, no, that makes sense because uh, I swear a lot. Like, you're telling me you swear a lot, therefore you're smart? You're smart. He's like, yeah, yeah, because I swear a lot. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> That's concrete that proof. sense. Concrete. I love it. You know, I go into the, I go into uh, the store, uh, the gas station, and uh, at nighttime, and I always see that guy there, the uh, conspiracy theorist. Yes. And uh, I'm still, I don't want to do it randomly. I'm still trying to find a way to strike up a conversation with him just so I can beat him to the punchline. Oh, wake up, man! Wake up! Yeah. I <laughs> want to beat him to that punchline. His own, ta- his yeah. own uh, catchphrase? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to happen. I just, I got to be able to strike up a conversation with him yeah. first. Uh, I usually just go in and do my business and then leave. Uh, he, he seems to be very quick to uh, just serve me and go about his business. He, he, he's always, I'll give him, he's a hard worker. He he's, al- he's always working. He's, yep. he's a hard worker. I'll give him that. Oh, yeah. But uh, I'm going to work it in there. Wake up, man. <laughs> <laughs> be awesome. I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to. What are you thinking, anyway? <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to find right, a conspiracy geez, whoa, just hey. to bring it up. <laughs> Look, well, okay, you don't have to yell at me, man. What is, what is going on here? Don't shoot me for asking this. Don't shoot me for saying this, but I believe women who are feminists are more brutal with their words towards men than men who are chauvinists. What is your opinion? I would like to hear what Jay and Scott have to say about that. Um, and then Emily well, corrected yeah. his spelling. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about that. <laughs> uh, you know what, feminists? Feminists, uh, they can be brutal with their uh, with their speech. They're very vocal about uh, different topics of feminism. That without saying like, "Hey, I'm a feminist," they just like, "You men, yeah. uh, screw you men!" Like you men always think like that, and you're you men are assholes and shit. And I don't, you know, I'm not like, uh, you know, like, oh, you women are bitches, all women. It doesn't happen as much. Um, but maybe we do it in a different way, I don't know. Um, some men do, maybe, I don't know, I don't. Yeah. Um, you got any thoughts on that? Uh, I guess there are two sides of the same coin, right? Pretty much. Chauvinists, chauvinists really hate women, though? 
I don't think they do. <clears throat> I don't know if they hate women. I guess they don't respect them very much. Yeah, probably not. I think feminism, feminists kind of hate men. Uh, Steve is on a, a rampage here. What? He posted the Durham Paranormal teaser trailer. On oh, yeah. Page. That's right awesome. Now, uh, you said guys he was going to look for that. You guys can go on there right in the comments section. Uh, Durham Paranormal, we had a uh, like a teaser trailer um, for the Paranormal Group. Thank you, Steve, for posting that. That uh, was our Paranormal Group, yeah. Yeah, we, we had a few guys on the team over the years. Uh, hands changed a few times, but... Uh, we used to go out quite religiously, um, and for quite a while too, it was like we'd go out in the winter months, because uh, you know summer months, me and Rick would be doing car things, and yep. then and then in the off season we'd just do paranormal <clears throat> stuff, and then everybody else on the team would be like, you know, why don't we do this stuff in the summer when it's warmer, because we're always out there freezing our balls off. Yep. Man, why are we doing this summer? It's so cold. I just want to go back to the car. I just want to leave. But we just we just kept braving it out, you know, just adding more and more layers. I'd be wearing like three <laughs> layers of socks and a bunch of shirts and some toques and I just bundled right up with gloves and it was just a mess. It's hardcore, man. Yeah, but uh, that was what we it's did in the <laughs> Extreme paranormal investigating. Oh man. Extreme. <laughs> I so that's how we do it. I wanted to do some more. Extreme paranormal. We gotta get out there. Yeah. Next, we're gonna do it on um, uh, motocross motorcycles. Extreme. Uh, Feminism yeah, epic. killed chivalry. Epic. Oh, you're way behind on comments, dude. Oh man, I'm just. Are you scrolling well, back? Well, it's not. It's not updating for me, so I gotta keep closing out and going back in. To... You, 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 you gotta get a whole new computer, dude. I do. Anybody you just wanna... throw that thing out. Throw it in the garbage. Spring me a computer. <clears throat> just we get rid of it, man. It's we need better chuck. production. We need. We need a sponsor. So yeah, somebody want to chuck us, say, uh, you know, two grand. That that'd be enough to get us production up and running. Yeah, and then we'll sponsor uh, whatever you got. And then uh, yeah, we just push your show, all the, push your product all the time on the show. Yeah, or we just keep saying your name. Yep, over and over again. Yeah. Yep. Be like Steve sponsored us. Steve, Steve, Steve Barry, Steve sponsored. Barry sponsored by sponsor. Steve Barry. It's Steve Barry. He sponsored us. Steve Barry. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Steve. Dem titties. Steve. Uh, um, why do I, why do we, he gets sponsored by a guy. <laughs> just, just <laughs> random guy. guy. Anyway, yeah, we got a new sponsor, Steve Barry. <laughs> That's it. That's it. He I threw am. us some cash. I got his uh, email if you want to, yep. you know, I don't know, talk to him, I guess. Steve at gayporn.com. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's his email. Uh, That's his main email. I his found... Secondary is a Hotmail address. Yeah, Hotmail. Yeah. Steve at Hotmail. Hey, there's the <laughs> rabbit. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, there's a rabbit That's... just offside camera. That's Steve at Hotmail. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. I like that. That's good. Uh huh. Ah, oh, Steve, you're so. Good. Oh. But I uh, uh hot <laughs> mail. I awesome. I found uh I found some cameras for us. We just gotta come up with the funding for it. Um, there were some great cameras, um, which I'll tell you about later. But I do have some production cameras. Just gotta come up with some money. They're All wireless. Right. They stream in HD. They're perfect, and you can sync a ton of them together so we can have like a multi camera angle. Oh, yeah. And then get an app on our phone where we can just switch camera angles with a switch of the button, which would be really cool. You're right. Yeah. I just heard a noise behind me. Oh. You heard a noise back there? Yeah. Is it a spooky ghost? I don't know. Man, I hope so. Oh, that'd be cool. Somebody get that'd the ghost cool. hunting equipment. There's somebody yeah, who just shows up behind I us. Know, I heard a noise, that's all. Maybe it was that rabbit. Maybe. He, he almost came into the garage. He's he circled around and came up behind me. He keeps trying to get in here. <laughs> I'm standing, I was standing off to the side the other day and uh, airing the garage out, and the rabbit comes up to the entrance, tries to come in, and I, t I kind of saw it in the corner of my eye. I move. Hey, what's that? Oh, it's a rabbit. And I spooked it, and, and like I heard it scurry off. The claws of the rabbit were like hitting the uh, 
the pavement there, scurried off. And he just tried to come in again, and he saw us, and then took off running. He really wants in here. It makes me wonder if there's something in here of his. Maybe he's got some babies back there or something. Uh, yeah. I heard some baby rabbits in the back. I heard something move behind me. That's right. I don't know what that was. If I wasn't so massive, I'd be scared of it. Probably. But look at me. I'm huge. Yep. You could probably take it. What do I care about anything for? What are they, what's it going to do? Rabbit. Just wring its neck. I wouldn't do that, actually. Oh, who's this? I like animals too much. Somebody said, hey, Scott, I saw that orb at my place again. Somebody named Mike Doherty. Oh, yeah. So somebody's got orbs at their place? Are you... Apparently. Uh, is you seeing this with your naked eye? Like you're, It's not on camera. You're seeing orbs with your naked eye? I think so. I think, he told me, I think he's told me a few stories about his house before. That'd be quite interesting that you're actually seeing orbs without any equipment. <coughs> I'd be a little more interested in seeing that. Orbs, yeah. It's just too bad he's he's uh, on heroin. I can't trust anything he says. Oh, Mike is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you, just, you really, you just called the guy out pretty hard, eh? Oh, shit. Are we still, oh, uh, we're still filming. I forgot. Sorry, Mike. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> He's, uh, it's not heroin. It, uh, it's, um, You we, said hair on him. It's, it's too bad he's got hair on him. It's not hair. It's, uh, you really the, wish that guy was bald. It's the uh, not so bad stuff. Um, what's what's that called? Crack? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> he's on crack. Jay, put your damn glasses on. No, they're in the house and I'm not wearing them. Yeah, he's not giving me some nerd <laughs> that wears glasses. <laughs> not like that hot male Steve. What a what a nerd. That's, uh, he's probably got pollen allergies, too. No. No? no. Oh, wow. Hey, look at that. I am allergic to cats, Whoa. though. Cool guy over here. Oh, I'm allergic to cats. Nerd. <laughs> they make my eyes go all over. Everybody, look at the nerd over here. Look at the nerd. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't know who I'm yelling, yelling out of. <laughs> I saw a car just pull up. I don't know. I'm just yelling at whoever's there. It's my neighbor. Is it? You're okay. yelling at my neighbor. You cut. Yeah. Called me out in front of my neighbor, called yeah. me dirt for glasses and uh, cat allergy. Cat allergy, yeah. Yeah. What a nerd. <laughs> um, it's sugar water. What else we got going on? It's sugar water. What? Steve Barry says it's sugar water. Sh what is sugar water? I don't know. I, I, you know what? He's probably honest. watching Men in Black again. Do we have Oh, is that a line from Men in Black? Remember, remember the the guy, the alien. He he goes into the body. Oh right, yeah. And he yeah. wants sugar water. Dom. Oh look, now you get other people. Dom said, "Fuck you, Mike." <laughs> oh yeah, he really screwed Mike over there. Yeah. Oh, I see. Seen it twice in the kitchen and going down to the basement. Wow, that's. That's really interesting, and it moves around too. That's pretty cool. Hmm. I'd be interested in that. Is uh, is he is he wanting us to go in and check it out? Maybe. I'd, I'd be down for coming to check that out. Oh, Dom. Dom says he knows Mike. Oh. That's well, what we do on this show, man. We get people together and. Yeah, we have a good old time. It's uh, it's one of those connected uh, networks, kind of like Facebook. Networking. Right. A work of netting. A work of netting? Yes. Okay. So, in the spirit of October, you got some, uh, you got some, <clears throat> some October stuff for us? Yeah, I was going to talk about, uh, uh Cocktoberfest? A co yeah, Cocktoberfest. Ha! <laughs> Ma! Halar, Halar J. Okay, what do, what do we got here? We got anyway. Uh, let's focus. Let's bring in the October focus, stuff. Focus, Dewsbury. Focus. Come on, Dewsbury. You can do it. You can do it, Dewsbury. Um. We, okay, so last episode we were talking about. I, I focused so hard, I unfocused myself. 
<laughs> You're like, I'm so focused, I have no fucking clue yeah, yeah. what I'm focusing I on. I stopped everything. <laughs> I was so focused, I stopped like just everything. So anyway, like <laughs> we get people together, sponsored by Steve Barry. Yeah, right on. <laughs> yeah. On Steve Monday Barry, night, Steve Barry. Steve Barry, hotmail dot com. <laughs> That's going to be your next shirt. Yeah. Sponsored by Steve Barry at Hotmail. Hey, don't ruin the shirt thing, man. All right. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jay. All right. So, uh, October. Last, uh, last episode, we mentioned a few things, and one of them was Ed and Lorraine Warren. Ed and Lorraine Warren, yes. Really famous uh, paranormal investigators slash demonologists slash, you know, whatever. Uh, she was like a psychic medium. Yeah, psychic medium, all that thing, all that stuff. And uh, for, I just printed out two quick things, because if does somebody doesn't know Ed and Lorraine, I'll just quick read it a quick bio. We can talk about them. Okay. And then one of their more famous, ca- well, maybe not one of the most famous ones, but my favorite case of theirs. Okay. I know what you're talking about, and it certainly has has grasped a lot of popularity in the last few years, that case. Yeah. But it was not always your most famous case. Yeah. So, uh, like you said, Lorraine, uh, she uh, was professed to be a clairvoyant yes. and a medium. Uh, now, she worked closely with... Sorry, just to interject, a medium. I want to make sure people know what a medium is. So a medium is a person who can commune with uh, with spirit um, and relay that information. So a medium is basically you're the middleman between spirit and uh, and living human beings. So that's what a medium would be. And then you got things like psychic medium who is using maybe spirit connection to predict the future and stuff like that. So yes, Lorraine was a medium. She could commune with these spirits. Yeah. Uh, so Ed, um, Ed Warren, he uh, he started off. He was in the military, the United States Navy veteran, yep. uh, World War Two, for and he was a foreign police officer. And uh, they said he was a self-taught demonologist. He uh, he authored books and he was a lecturer. Mm-hmm. So they got together and started investigating uh, the paranormal. They started uh, the New England Society for Psychic Research, which is one of the oldest ghost hunting groups anywhere. They uh, wrote a lot of books about the paranormal. Mm-hmm. They said they claimed to have investigated over 10,000 cases during their career. That is a ton. <clears throat> 10,000. Um, they were the very first investigators in a controversial Amityville haunting. That's the, probably their most famous. Mm-hmm. Amityville. Um, uh, they uh, responsible for training a lot of demonologists, and uh, they yeah they trained a lot of people and. Um, of course, a lot of their investigations have been investigated by other people, right? To s- to try to debunk them. Yeah, a lot of the well, a lot of the famous landmarks and stuff for paranormal that are psych- like popular and famous for for paranormal. Ed, Ed and Lorraine had had investigated them, and paranormal investigators investigate them all the time. Uh, Ed's Ed's passed on though. When did yep. when did Ed pass on? Uh, to two thousand six. Two thousand six. Ed yep. passed on. Lorraine is still with us. She's still alive, um, yeah. And Lorraine is uh, is very heavily still into the business of uh, paranormal and paranormal research. Uh, she will connect quite frequently with people that have different TV shows. Yeah. Uh, Ghost Adventures and and Taps and uh, Paranormal State and all of them they they all seem to have a very tight community network and they all use each other to she, get stuff done yeah she's also a, a, a common guest or a frequent guest on uh, coast to coast coast to coast that's their radio show right yep. yeah coast, coast to coast, coast am it's on every night uh on, uh, on uh, am 640. AM, every night now oh yeah well, oh, that's a good show. And um, they, yeah, they touch on everything. everything. They do UFOs and everything. Tons, tons. All kinds of stuff. 
Oh, yeah. That's a good radio show. If you're up around midnight and you're looking for a good radio show to listen to instead of watching TV, Coast to Coast AM, uh, that is a fantastic show. AM640. Yeah, they cover a lot of stuff. They go into a lot of different things. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, and Lorraine, I was gonna, they're uh, my favorite case of theirs. I, Amityville, the Amityville haunting is probably the most famous. It is. Um, my favorite is about Annabelle, the Raggedy Ann doll. Yes. And it's a basis for Child's Play, uh, the movie, there's two Annabelle movies, and then The Conjuring. So that one story has got a bunch of movies based off it. And that's about uh, a Raggedy Ann doll that was uh, allegedly haunted by a spirit. Mm -hmm. Or they call it a demon because it was evil. Yep. And um, right now the, the doll is in their uh, occult museum in Connecticut mm -hmm. in a glass case. And it says, it says absolutely do not open on the case. Yeah, and um, they have, uh, if you've seen The Conjuring, The Conjuring movies are based off of Ed and Lorraine Warren. They center around Ed and Lorraine. Um, and then they just spin off of Annabelle, uh, where Annabelle had her own movie. And they show a version of Annabelle in the movie that is in the glass case. Um, and they show that Ed and Lorraine have, like, they have a whole room that's dedicated to paranormal and haunted items. And it's a locked room in their house, almost like a museum. And Annabelle is in there as yep. well. Yeah. So. Um, Annabelle was uh, owned by uh, uh, a kid. I think it was a girl. And, um, yeah, it was supposed to be inhabited by the spirit of a dead girl named Annabelle Higgins. Yes. So I guess they pinpointed who was haunting the doll. I shouldn't say possessed. I should say haunting. Yes. Uh, possession is a living person, and haunting is a inanimate object or a house or building. But um, yeah, the story goes it was owned by a kid, and the kid, just like all dolls, they played with it and thought it was alive, and they would uh, every night put it into a chair, cross its legs, and and talk to it. And they said that it did it, they did it so much that a evil spirit was attracted to the doll because the kid paid so much attention to it and thought it was alive that it haunted the doll just to get at the kid. And, uh, and then it, when it got into the doll, it started moving the doll. The doll started uh, to do malicious things and uh, Eventually, that the Warrens came in, investigated it, and took the doll away. Yes, and uh, all the all the bad stuff that was happening to the kids uh, stopped when they took it away. Mm -hmm. And um, it's funny because I told that story to uh, a friend of mine. He was a he's a pastor, and uh, I don't know why I told him that story. I thought it was interesting. And uh, he looked at me, and I thought he was going to say I'm like crazy or something. He goes, he goes, yeah, I can believe that. I'm like, well, you can believe that, really? He goes, oh yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And he explained to me how, yeah, it does make sense because uh, uh, he he would says in the Bible, the exact same thing the Warren said was, the more attention you pay to something, the more attractive it is to uh, an evil spirit. Um, <clears throat> the more attractive it is to an evil spirit. And that's what they do. They try to find a way to uh, gain uh, entry into a home or gain somebody's trust. And uh, so that's why he, he could believe that. And I mean, there's all kinds of stories about... I, I don't have all the stories. There's all kinds of stories about stuff that was happening in the house. Yeah. And uh, they said... Uh, the doll would move, and then they're like a scratch mark would appear on a girl's back. Uh, they they were getting physically attacked. Mm -hmm. They would see bite marks. Yep. And uh, the doll would move from one place to the next. I mean, crazy stuff. 
Dom, Dom. He call, <clears throat> this story sounds like Chucky. It, that's what we were saying. Right, yeah. Annabelle is one of the dolls that the movie Chucky was based off of. The uh, the other doll that is a also a haunted doll that Chucky was based off of is Robert the doll. Uh, right. Robert the doll yeah. is a very cursed doll. Um, actually, and he is in a museum as well. The owner of that doll, I can't remember the owner's name for the life of me right now. The owner of that doll has them in a museum. There is a sign on Robert the doll, or beside Robert the doll, that says, uh, you cannot take a photograph of Robert without asking permission from the doll. You actually have to speak to the doll as if it was alive. Um, and there is lots of people that take pictures. You can find pictures online of Robert the doll if you look up Robert. Um, there's lots of people that have taken pictures of Robert and not asked permission, thinking it was funny or a joke or something. And all of those people were cursed. Uh, there was uh, there's a show, um, Haunted Possessions, I believe it's called. It's with Zach Baggins. He did his yep. own show, the guy from Ghost Adventures. And uh, he somebody brought Robert the Doll onto the show, and then he brought somebody that had taken a picture of Robert the Doll and was cursed. And from the minute she left the museum, uh, she was in a car accident on the way home. And then when the car was fixed a few days later, she got into another car accident. She she had a boat, like a houseboat. She went to her houseboat. She fell down the stairs of the houseboat and broke her neck no way. and lived. She almost died. <clears throat> and her life, I think it was for something like three years, was continually cursed with bad things. Zach had this person come onto his show and sat her in a room with Robert the doll and, and had her, she had to give a completely sincere apology to Robert the doll. To the doll. And the wow. owner of the doll said this happened so much that she literally, her junk drawer is a drawer full of letters to Robert the doll apologizing for taking the picture, saying, I'm sorry, I've been cursed by, because I took a picture of Robert the doll. There's so many people that'll do it. And uh, yeah, that is one of the curses to Robert the doll. Yeah. Um, and on the show, actually, uh, Zach Baggins, curator, came into the room with Robert the Doll in there, didn't know the doll was in there, and when he turned and saw Robert the Doll, he, he kind of yelped, oh! and then he ran out of the room, and Zach made him come back in the room and said, because he didn't want Robert to be offended by that scare, oh my god, and made his curator apologize, and he did. You know, I'm wow. sorry, Robert. Will you please forgive me? Oh you gosh. just startled me for sitting there. I was Jeez. not expecting you to be there. That's how serious the curse was. That they had to treat Robert the doll. And uh, basically, anyways, they the owner said Robert the doll is one of the uh, one of the basis for Chucky movies, and Annabelle yeah. is the other one as well. Uh, Haunted possessed dolls is basically the the idea behind Chucky. Uh, which is, you know what, a lot of horror movies from our classics, they all center around objects that are actually haunted and people don't realize that. Um, another uh, really famous one that is my favorite is uh, the Dybbuk Box. Right. The <clears throat> Dybbuk Box is said to house the Dybbuk, who is a demon and a very cursed demon. Um, the Dybbuk Box... Uh, is actually has an, the owner of the Dick box right now has it stored in a military style box buried underground on his hundred acre of land somewhere in a secret location he won't tell anybody and uh, he bought it on eBay the original owner did and then the current owner bought it off that guy because he was just tired of it and so many people have died around of this Dick box because you're not supposed to open it because it lets the Dybbuk out mm. and uh, the original uh, well the original owner actually is is a Jewish uh, family because a Dybbuk is a Jewish demon and uh, when they got rid of the box to the guy on eBay he said uh, when he opened the box um, he felt really sick and blood started coming out of his eyes Wow! which is uh, that's really powerful that's not good that's insane and the people that own the Dybbuk box and the guy that just the previous owner they are both very uh, it's like the box possesses them like, like a possession it uh they are very attached to the box they want to be around the box all the time 
and they get a lot of anxiety and stuff when they're when they're pulled away from the box. Hmm. They start sweating and stuff like possession. Really? So, there's some uh, if you if you are interested in in haunted possessions, look up. Uh, I think it's like Deadly Possessions or Haunted Possessions or something like that from Zach Baggins. I can post up a link. There's a full season of it. I've watched a few episodes. It's really interesting. Zach is very eccentric, I guess you would say. It's the only, yeah. it's the only way to describe Zach. He, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like him. He's an asshole. He, he is, he's just different, but uh, he's very knowledgeable. Yeah, and he has his own paranormal museum. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which his mother works in and stuff like that in Las Vegas. Uh, it's pretty neat stuff. But, uh, yeah, circle back. Ed and Lorraine Warren, they are probably, I would say they're probably the most famous. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Long, like, line of famous uh, paranormal investigators or demonologists. Uh, demonology is interesting. Did you know that uh, in some <clears throat> some universities in the States, you can actually study demonology? And get a degree, but uh, they uh, nowhere will recognize demonology as an actual PhD. Right. Wow. Yeah. Which I mean, that makes sense to me because anybody can just study demonology and say I'm a demonologist. Yeah. At what, at what point do you consider it a PhD? Right. So, but there's there's lots of study. There's actually all kinds of study courses. If you look online, you can take a lot of courses online. That'd be, a fun, that'd be a fun thing to do, I guess. Uh, the Another demonologist, Ryan Buell. Ryan Buell claims to be a demonologist. He is the guy that uh, ran Paranormal State. Uh, okay. The Penn State paranormal group that he did. He did that show Paranormal State with the students and stuff, and they broke off and ended up... There's a whole lot of controversy with Ryan Buell, but he does claim to be a demonologist as well. <laughs> and he studied under Ed Larry Moore. Oh really? Huh? Yep. Studied under Lorraine. Right, so, right. and he's close with Lorraine as well. Yeah. So, like I said, small net community. Um, yeah. They seem they seem to appear on each other's shows all the time and stuff yeah. like that. You oh, can yeah. see the tight net. Definitely a tight net community. Yeah. The uh, well, it's like a it's one of those fringe communities where, you know, yeah. it's so it's so. Uh, off the wall and like fringy that you know mm -hmm. everybody knows each other yeah i mean Small. if i was if i was to meet any of the famous <clears throat> paranormal investigators for me look at lorraine warren would be the that would be the mecca of me that'd be like the the wayne gretzky of meeting paranormal people yeah. oh, for sure yeah. yeah meeting lorraine warren would be awesome they were the first yeah i think they even have conventions and stuff for paranormal stuff in the states which uh, is pretty cool i wouldn't doubt it yeah it's a lot bigger down there. Like Friday night on TV, you can just you can turn into certain stations, and it's just paranormal stuff all night. There's all kinds of shows. Yeah, there are a lot of shows. Uh, in recent recent years, they, there's been a ton. You know what? I thought it might have been dying ones. off because uh, up here we don't get as much exposure to it. And I thought maybe the topic was dying off. It was a little more, I guess you say, a little more pop culture or trendy a few years back. But uh, if you if you do a search for paranormal shows on Wikipedia, um, it gives you a list. And over the last like five years, there's just more and more and more yeah. paranormal shows. There's tons of them. Um, I mean, I I have my favorites. I'm sure you have your favorites. But uh, I've been trying to get into some new ones and stuff to try different things out. Mm -hmm. um, Nick Groff, who was on paranormal or on Ghost Adventures, yep. he left them about three seasons ago and uh he runs his own show and he runs uh, his co-host was a team member from taps so okay. uh, ghost hunters taps wow yeah so the two of them have teamed up and they have their own show and it's pretty cool because they they don't lock themselves in but they go to a haunted location and they stay there for 72 hours wow. doing an investigation the whole time so when they stop to sleep like on a they bring a mobile cot they only sleep for like two or three hours and then they go right back at it for 72 hours and then they it was a pretty interesting show they got some pretty good stuff on there yeah and they did some famous locations and stuff like that <laughs> and uh well, one of the episodes you wonder who they called lorraine Moore. yeah yeah called lorraine mm -hmm. uh because lorraine's son-in-law owned a building that was highly haunted it was haunted with a demon and she actually went in 
and exercise the house. Yeah. And uh, it was still having problems. That's how powerful that demon was. Wow. It was pretty crazy. I think it was like the second last episode. If you can look that up, Nick Roth. Uh, I can't. I can't think of the name of these shows for life. I should have wrote them all down for you guys. Um, but uh, any other shows that you used to watch or or used to like? Um, not really. Uh,